It's another Mate here with Teacher Jenny. Join me for another topic. And this time we're going to talk about hypothesis testing using pair T test and using Excel. But let's try to talk about how to identify whether we've got a pair T test, independent T test, or a two sample T test. Now, if you have a problem which uses the same sample and you are trying to test out two conditions uh, just like a pre-test post-test uh, that's an example for a paired t-test now just like this problem here a researcher wants to investigate if a new training program improves the performance of employees on a specific task they randomly select 10 employees and measure their performance on the task before and after they complete the training program. The performance is measured on a scale from 0 to 100 with higher, higher scores indicating performance, better performance. We have here the, the set of data that we have to uh, gather or that we need in order for us to do the data analysis here. So we have to test our hypothesis first. Um, by following the five steps of hypothesis testing. So let's start with step number one. We are to state the hypothesis. So stating the hypothesis would mean we have to indicate our null hypothesis based on our problem. Since it says here, the researcher wants to investigate if a new training program improves the performance of employees in a specific task. So meaning to say that he wanted to know whether that particular training program would somehow be improving. That means to say that the performance of the employee will be greater than uh, that one of without or before the training. So our null hypothesis here will be there is no significant difference in the mean performance of employees before and after the training program. In symbol, if you are using in your data analysis a symbol, you may have that one as H sub O or H sub zero. And then we are trying to compare the mean. So I'll start with the second mean. It's equal to the mean of the other, uh, the other variable. Our alternative here, because we wanted to know or we wanted to investigate if that training program will be improving the performance of the employees, our alternative hypothesis now is the mean performance of employees is significantly higher after the training program. Our symbol for that one is H sub A. You will have there mu sub 2 or the mean of the second variable is greater than the mean of the first variable. The second variable there is the after uh, training while the first variable there is the before training. Let's now move on to step number two. Step number two, we are to determine the appropriate test to be used. So again, since we have here a problem which has two variables, but then again, the variables are taken from a uh, same sample, we have here uh, before and after conditions. So we'll be using paired t-test. Our step number three is determining the critical value C. And this time we will, we will be using our Excel and the under data analysis for determining our critical value. But we have to identify first whether what type of tail tests are we having in a problem. Since we have there on the alternative hypothesis greater than, which means that we're having there a one-tailed test. And most likely we are having there a right-tailed one tail test. We also need our level of significance, which is a 5%. We 
we have our df we which we got nine because we've got 10 um, employees that we're gathering the data with so df will be a nine 10 minus one that's a nine so let's now do our data analysis using the excel for the paired t-test This time we're going to learn how to uh, do our data analysis using the t-test using Excel uh, sheets. So we have here our data. We have inputted our data already here on the Excel. All we have to do is to simply click on the data here and then look for the data analysis. If you don't have the data analysis on your Excel yet, then you have to look for the video tutorial on my youtube channel uh, which will be guiding you as to how to do how to uh, put the data analysis on your excel sheet so let's now go for clicking on the data analysis and then once you're there you are going to look for the t-test paired to sample for means double click on that one and then you are going to input variable one now i wanted to have uh, the label on my variable one retained so i'm going to highlight including my label on my column then i'm going to click on my second variable highlighting that one including the label as well then if you've included or if wanted to include the label, you may you have to make sure that you clicked or check the labels so that your label will be recognized and so it included. But since we're not using here, I mean we're not actually using hypothesis hypothesis mean difference, so no need for you to input that particular uh, tab. And then uh, we're using level of significance which is five percent here so i'm inputting 0 0.05 as my alpha and i wanted that my output will be located also on the same uh sheet that i'm in so i'm going to click on the output range and then i'm going to choose on where i'm going to place that one let's say i'm going to place that one here and then i'm done with everything that i need so i'm going to click on ok so there you go. Here is your result for the t-test paired to sample for means. And it's already now in an APA format, but then in reporting our um, result, we're not going to be inputting everything here. We just have to pick on those needed information. But since if you try to look at the result here, the decimal numbers or the values there are not in a uniform decimal number, so I'm going to change the decimal uh, by clicking on decrease or increase decimal. So I wanted to have it in three decimal places. So let me just have it like that. And once, once actually you can click on any here. So it would turn out to be like this. It's already in two decimal places, but I wanted to report that one using three decimal places. So I'll be increasing that one still. So there you go. We have now our performance before and then performance after um, training variables with a different result for the mean variance and observations. But uh, we do have the same result for the entire thing, like the Pearson correlation, hypothesized mean difference, DF, T stat, P value for one tail, T value for T critical for one tail, and P value for two tail, and T critical for two tail. So here is what to do on doing the data analysis for, for the paired T test. So going back to step number three, determining the critical value out from the, the result on the Excel that we had, we are going to locate the critical value for the one-tailed T 
test. Here we have the T critical one tail. We have that one as 1.833. And of course, we have the DF displayed here, which is a 9. And then moving on to step number four, computing for the test statistic. Some of or most of the time, we need the test statistic because in reporting the table for uh, the result on the data analysis, we will be needing the information as well on the computed value, which is our test statistic. You can locate your computed value for the test statistic under TSTAT. So locating the TSTAT value, we have that one here on the first result which is negative 5.610. But in reporting that one, we've got our test statistic, which is going to be equal to a 5.610 because the negativity on the T-stat will only mean that um, the difference between the mean of the two variables there is going to be a negative. We need to say that the performance before training has a lower mean as compared to the mean on the performance after training. That's why we're getting a negative value here. I did, uh, I did another test in which I had my first variable assigned to as the performance after training and my second variable assigned to the performance before training. And the results are all the same except for the T-STAT, which is a positive result. So again, the T-STAT, the negativity in there, would somehow be describing your mean of the variables, the first variable and the second variable. Since on the first result, we had our performance before training got a lower mean as compared to the performance after training. That's why our result for the T-STAT is a negative. But upon changing that one to having the first variable as the after training and the second variable to before training, we've got a positive result on that one. So that is why we can just have our T value there as or T-STAT value as 5.610. So that is why in reporting the, the table for the result and the data analysis, we do not see any negative result in there. Uh, most of the time, we are seeing there a positive result. You may also include there on your report the negativity, but then again, um, that only is going to be helping you out in describing about the mean of each of the variables, comparing those two means. Let's now move to the last step, the decision making. And based on our p-value, because most of the researchers are using the nowadays p-value, comparing that one with the level of significance, that is why on step number four, I mean number three, we're having there a level of significance being declared because we will be using that one in our decision making. Now, in decision-making, we are to compare our p-value for one tail, which is a 0, 0.000 this time. We're comparing that one with the level of significance, which is a 0 0.05. So since our p-value is less than the level of significance, our decision there is to reject the null hypothesis. Now, rejecting the null hypothesis would simply mean that there is enough evidence that a new training program improves the performance of employees on a specific task. So that is how you are going to do the hypothesis testing using the paired t-test and using an Excel. Now, in reporting, in reporting our data analysis result, this one is our sample table. It's already in an APA format. 
you can refer to that particular information that we need. So first, we have to indicate there the table number, the title of the table. It should be italized. And then we have to define the variables. Our variables here are the following, before training and after training. And then we have there the DF, which is 9. The computed value, which is 5.610. And then we've got there a p-value, which is less than 0 0.001. Notice that the p-value, we do not write there 0, 0.000. Instead, we are writing there less than 0 0.001. This is every time that you will have there a p-value, which is equal to a 0 0.00. If your p-value is other than that, meaning it's with different value aside from the 0 0.000, then you are to write there the exact value. So again, you're only using the less than 0 0.001 only if the p-value is a 0 0.00. So the decision on H sub O must be also indicated. We are rejecting the null hypothesis. So you're writing on the table, reject. Under the column for the significance, since we have rejected our null hypothesis, so that means it's significant. So that is how you are going to do a table reporting on an APA format. Once again, this is your teacher Jenny saying practice and practice, and eventually that makes your life perfect.